Every time my AI agent wrote code, I was spending time manually verifying everything by running linters by hand, checking the types and rebuilding the code. I know it's really dumb, right? So let me just give you a breakdown of what's happening. I have a backend that's written in Rust. And as soon as the AI agent would write the code, it would then just try to write code for the front end. So when they would start talking, things would actually be out of sync. And I was spending a lot of time just basically babysitting my AI instead of building on things. And that's where I actually found out the power of hooks. And today I'm actually gonna talk to you about how hooks can actually run automatically when files change. And this is really important because when an agent writes the Rust code now, the hooks are actually gonna regenerate the TypeScript types for the front end. And so whenever the agent's also gonna write anything else, it's also gonna run the linting tasks. And we're gonna talk more a little bit about that. And the agent finishes this whole task, it's actually gonna run a validation of the build. And so in one request, we're able to get these extra steps in without me being involved. And the agent will actually feel much smarter because it's fixing its own mistakes along the way. I don't want you to make the same mistake and spend hundreds of thousands of tokens on fixing all these little nuances. So if you stay to the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up these hooks inside of Cursor. And I'm also gonna go over how Factory Droid does it differently. And there's also some advantages that it has that is a little bit different than Cursor as well. So let me show you how this actually works. The reason why we're creating the hooks for those who are kind of wondering is that after the file is edited, I want these uh, types to be generated from any Rust code that we touch. And so that way the front end will be able to pick them up when we start running front end code. So that's kind of uh, where we were doing that. And then on stop, I wanted to do some specific uh, scripts here. And the hooks, what they do is as soon as the backend server code is written, cursor will then kick off a script or an, whatever AI agent will kick off a hook script to build all the types for the backend server that are in Rust. And then from there, you know, as part of space, space time DB framework, uh, we can then pull that to the front end and the front end can then, you know, as you're writing code, the AI agent can then check the types and see, okay, wait, the types are failing here. I should actually, you know, do the right thing and so forth. So um, that is super important to get down and we're going to make sure we do that. The hooks JSON can live in three locations, all are combined. So in the project dot cursor hooks JSON, this is per project hooks in the user global state or system wide. Okay. So it's going to be in the project. Your kickoff, you, you'd you put it into cursor hooks JSON. So, okay. Oh, okay. So it doesn't go into folder hooks. Got it. So I don't need the folder then. Delete. Perfect. Okay. And then here I could just copy and paste this. Yes. Okay. Use exa code MCP to look up the space time DB um, docs on generating types with Rust with uh, our Rust server as we wanted to make sure the AI agent had the scaffolding and what it needed after. All right, so let's see. So your project has Rust server generated types. When the AI agents, when AI agents or you modify the type bindings need to be generated in the client so it stays in sync. To create hooks directory script. Okay, so we need to create the script, make the script executable. So how it works after edit, hook fires when cursor edits an event. Yes, if yes, space time runs generate to generate. Okay, alternative, simpler unconditional hook. If you want just to always regenerate regardless of the file that's changed, we can just do this on file edit, got it. No, if we touch the file, I think we should just generate. If this is simpler, but runs on every file edit, maybe slower. Yeah, exactly. Here's what I set up. The hooks generate binding script that runs in file edits. So when cursor AI agents edits any file after edit hook fires, the script checks if the edited file is in SRC. Is that where our code is? Yeah, it is. Okay. Noise. And uh, if yes, it runs a space time generate um, and to generate the TypeScript bindings in lib module bindings. Okay. Now when your agent fires, okay. Cool. So I think we got the correct thing set up now with our regenerate bindings. What about after file edit? Okay, so I see the plan has more comprehensive hooks than we created. Let me spec out the remaining work. Okay, so we have after file edit here and then on stop hook, which was the final validation and then NPM scripts. After file edit, we're just doing everything like if it's in here, run these bindings. If if it has ends with the TypeScript, just run ESLint bun fix. 
if also since we touch any files in these uh, rust backend we're going to just run cargo <laughs> uh, so what does it say yeah cd server and cargo clippy and it's just going to basically run it okay and then on stop whenever the agent finishes writing it's going to just do a rust check so cargo check and then see if there's any errors and then we're just basically updating it so after file edit and then on stop okay that's cool. I like this plan. It's a little more clean. The thing with hooks that you have to be mindful is that every time the agent runs, they're going to run at those specific steps, you know, like at the, you know, before the agent runs in the middle of the agent run, like if it writes to a file or like afterwards, if it stops, right? Like if you have a whole bunch of things you need to do, it may feel like your agent's super slow after that. So just beware. Okay. <laughs> so the factory droid versus cursor hooks. So it says factory droid has like a fact dot factory settings and cursor has dot cursor hooks. The advantages of factory droids tool matchers can target specific tools like edit, write, bash and grep and more granular events like session start, session ends, subagent stop pre compact and has built in slash hooks commands to manage hooks interactively. So to enable hooks run settings hooks enable toggle. So slash settings and then hooks. Where's my hooks hooks enabled. Okay, cool. Would you like me to create the compatible hooks? Yes, please. All right, so here we are. We're going to create the hooks now for the project inside of Factory because I use Factory Droid as well. Um, it's good to do this type of research ahead of time because um, you can see what the differences are between the two different platforms versus just telling the AI agent to do it. And since we're using a Claude model, it's probably going to say, I know how to write Claude hooks. <laughs> but the uh, implementation details actually do matter here. So you can kind of see, yeah, here we are. Factory, yeah, here we are post tool use we have hooks we have the scripts here for stop hook dang nice okay hooks post tool you'll stop session start oh what's session start um starting session ensuring bindings are current oh so whenever the agent runs and starts a session it basically tries to make sure that the bindings are set before it even starts to write the code so it doesn't make any assumptions about the code it writes super smart we're setting up our hooks files and making good changes here damn <laughs> this is wild it's literally writing it like in typescript and shell that's interesting so the shell script kicks off the typescript mm -hmm. file and runs it in bun cursor hooks have been reviewed and both systems will now automatically regenerate db typescript findings when rust files change and then all commands have dot catch and true so the failure doesn't break the hook here's the key findings from the spacetime db docs you cannot use traditional cargo build so here's the file the problem command was this okay why it fails is because of WebAssembly. so the correct commands instead of cargo build cargo check would you like me to fix the hooks yes so now our hooks and stuff are configured in here correctly the biggest thing i do is planning and i may spend a hundred thousand tokens in planning but you see how much it saves us right and then i'm setting up the scaffolding the tooling like i don't have to go in an agentic loop to fix a lot of like compile issues because that's already being done in like a hooks call, right? So like by the fact that like the agent runs a, a hook to do linting or if it's doing something in the server, like all these best practices kind of help save you on costs too. So when our agent starts writing code, uh, at the time that it's writing code, cursor and factory droid and all those different agent files will actually be able to, uh, as they're writing code, be able to like check things, make sure they work. And if it doesn't continue to iterate on those fixes. So we have a lot of scaffolding in place now to run a lot of things autonomously, which is very helpful for now giving instructions to the agents to write code. From here on forward, it should sort of feel magical that the agent always gets code right or is fixing bugs because we want to spend more time prompting and adding features. So I think we should just build it. So here's part one, fix, kick, shoot, All right? Okay, let's go and build it. This looks good. So game scene finished already. Damn. Damn. Okay. Cursor is cooking. Excellent. The Rust build now works. Let me run a type check. Beautiful. Beautiful. Ah, oh, I love having my hook set up correctly in cursor. It's so nice. Okay. I need to update the actions to pass the new direction parameters. Oh, it's so beautiful. So now whenever code changes, the hooks actually validate everything automatically. And the agent actually catches the errors before we even see them. This is the scaffolding that lets you ship and not just vibe code. I still need to test if this actually holds up when we add multiplayer. So in the next stream, I'm going to actually test if this holds up when we add multiplayer. I'm going to have about 10 different people playing all at once and try to see if this thing doesn't explode. So I don't know if you realize, but the agent actually isn't smarter as a result of this. 
we're just giving it better guardrails. And if you're thinking a little bit further, and you're probably already realizing this, this is actually what separates prompting from just praying and hoping everything just builds in production. Drop in the comments what hooks you're actually building with in your projects. What are you doing differently inside of Droid and Cursor? I really want to hear about it. All right, folks, let's go ahead and cook.